Tomb Raider 1, 2 and 3 got remastered and as I ventured through the grand and beautiful landscapes of these games, I also visited the grand halls of the Croft Manor. And within the Croft Manor, I was truly captivated. I think everybody of us knows that the walls of the Croft Manor have beautiful paintings. These paintings are actually whispering the history and the archery of the past and are waiting to be discovered. In this video, you can see me join into each painting's history and also find the roots and the real world. Let's discover together the real life masterpieces that have inspired Tomb Raider. Welcome to my home. I'll take you on a guided tour. First painting that I want to talk about is directly at the start of the Croft Manor. If you're going to turn around, you're going to see this painting of Queen Elizabeth the First, also known as the Virgin Queen. What the fuck? It's a painting from George Goa, who was a sergeant painter, and a sergeant painter is basically a court painter of the English monarchy. And there's two details that I want to point out about this painting. First of all, the very dark background. This dark background is actually typical for this era and it serves to highlight the figure <clears throat> and also the costume of the person depicted. And this brings me then to the second point. Queen Elizabeth is oftentimes depicted with a lot of pearls. And these pearls are there to show her purity and as I have said, her virginity. Overall, I just like the connection between Lara Croft as a British person and then on the other hand, just a depiction of the British royalty. The second painting I'm gonna talk about is actually on the other side and it is the Ashbourne portrait. It is also an oil on canvas painting, but the artist is unknown. And you may ask yourself, Who in the blue hell are you? Well, the interesting thing is, we are not sure. For a long time it was believed that the painting was depicting Shakespeare, but it seems like the painting has been altered with to meet a growing demand of people who wanted to see what Shakespeare looked like. I need photos! Photos of Shakespeare! This is a poetry journal! Okay, then poems about Shakespeare! For that reason, a bald patch has been added to the head of this person and also the year in the coat of arms has been altered with. In 1940, scientific evidence has actually led to the belief that Edward de Vere is being depicted here, who is also believed by some people to be the true creator of the Shakespeare plays. On the other hand, in 1979, the painting was being worked on and during a restoration process, it was found that there seems to be a different coat of arms. And this coat of arms was then connected to Hugh Hammersley. So after all, we still don't really know who is depicted in this painting, but it is a very famous painting and I think it also fits to the rich history of the Croft Manor. The painting right next to it is an Easter egg. It is an Easter egg to the game The Legacy of Cain made by Crystal Dynamics. The Legacy of Cain is just about a nobleman who turns into a vampire in a complex plot uh, about the end of the world. And while Cain in his human form, who is depicted in this painting, is not a real person, I have dug deeper and I think I found the reference material where this painting is stemming from. John Singer Sargent was drawing Sir Frank Swettenham and as you can see in both of these paintings, the pose is very very similar, the lighting is very very similar and I think this is actually where the reference material has been taken from. If we go to the other side of the room we're going to find actually the painting with the painter who has the most complicated name. The painting in itself is called The Letter but the creator of the painter is Jean-Baptiste Camille Courant. It is once again oil on canvas and in this portrait we have the depiction of a woman who is reading or writing a letter which just shows her intimacy and gives us a view into her life. So much about this, next to it we have another painting which is from another French artist. This painting is from Valentin de Bologna. This artwork is actually quite unique in a sense because the artist is usually depicting people in a multi-composition. So you have multiple people within the painting. This brings us then to one of the most 
famous paintings in the world and probably the most famous painting in her collection girl with a pearl earring pretty self-explanatory what is depicted in this artwork it is an artwork created by johannes vermeer in the year 1665 and it is also known as the dutch mona lisa but many people don't know this is actually not a portrait it is a so-called trony who is the person depicted in a painting? Well, we don't know. It could be a model, but it also could be a pure piece of fiction. And fun fact, the earring doesn't necessarily have to be a pearl earring, but it could also be a polished piece of tin. The next work of art that I want to talk about is not a painting, but it is a tapestry. It was very hard for me to find the original of this, but here it is. Peter the Great at the Battle of Poltava in 1764. This tapestry was created under the direction of Louis Caravac, who was a French painter born in Marseille and moved over to Russia to become there the court painter. It is one of the few paintings where you actually see that in the original Tomb Raider, this tapestry was the basis for the in-game asset. I think it is great that they kept to it and also released it in the remaster then. Next we have Robert Peake's The Elder depiction of Elizabeth Stewart, Queen of Bohemia. I actually don't think there is a lot to say about this. This is just his depiction of her in the early 17th century. Let's go over here and take a look at this painting. It is again an oil on canvas painting by Georges de la Tour and it is depicting Magdalene with two flames. The use of flames is symbolic and represents the inner turmoil and spiritual awakening of her. Here we see once again the use of the chiaroscuro effect which is the high contrast which is built in into this painting drawing our attention over to it and also giving the whole painting more depth. We had a lot of English and also French paintings but here we are now with a Spanish one. It is once again oil on canvas and this is depicting Elizabeth of Bourbon queen of spain the exact year is once again unknown it is believed that it is around 1620 and here we also do not know who is the painter it was believed that it could be from juan pantuja de la cruz or also from angelo nardi but we do not know so here i love the fact that we have royalty from all of europe and also all kind of time periods coming together in the craft manner with the next painting we actually go back into the realm of the uk we take a deeper look at scotland we have mary queen of scots in captivity it is a depiction of mary during her captivity in england and these paintings are also known as the so-called sheffield portraits this portrait is inspired by other portraits of her which were made by nicholas hillier but as far as i know it is not 100 percent certain who has made this painting of her and this depiction going over to one of the oldest paintings in the croft manor it is portrait of a man in a red turban it is a painting made by jan van eyck it was created in 1433 it is not sure who is depicted in this painting, but it is believed to be a self-portrait. With the direct gaze at the viewer, it is implementing a style which is quite common for self-portraits. This stems from the fact that if you are drawing a self-portrait, you're going to look at a mirror and you're going to stare directly in your own eyes. While the name suggests that the person in the painting is wearing a turban, this is actually not the case. The person is wearing a chaperon, and the chaperon is a kind of headgear which is quite common in early Netherlands painting. So if somebody is calling this a man in a turban, well, you can correct that person and flex on them. This brings us over to this grand painting. It is a still life painting called Still Life with a Spaniel and her pups. Franz Snyders was known for his still lives which were depicting nature, hunting scenes, kitchen tableaus with a sort of realism and dramatism. And I think it also becomes very clear how this all comes together in this painting. Then hidden in the main hall we have a hidden painting because it is the only instance where this painting is actually appearing. It is the painting Seaport at Sunset by Claude Laurent. This painting was created 
created in 1639 and is again oil on canvas and today you can find this painting actually in the Louvre. It does not depict a specific location but is rather a stylized version of a seaport. We have another depiction of the British aristocracy and we have here Lady Elizabeth Percy. The painting was created by Peter Lely who was a cork painter in the 17th century celebrated for his portraits. He was pretty well known for capturing the aristocracy with elegance and also a kind of refined grace. Now we have to make a jump to Tomb Raider 2 and in Tomb Raider 2 you have some unique paintings which were not featured in Tomb Raider 1 or Tomb Raider 3. One of those is this one here. This is George Stubbs painting called Mares and Foals in a River. George Stubbs was a 18th century British painter and he was also very very well known for his detailed and a lifelike depiction of horses. And I think also Mares and Foals in a River showcases Stubbs mastery of capturing the anatomy of horses and also the beauty in a natural setting. I have not seen Lara Croft riding any horses, but well, I wouldn't be surprised. The next artwork that I showcase is once again not a painting, it is also a tapestry. William Morris has created this tapestry and I actually don't know the real name of it. I have found this tapestry with 20 different names during my research, but I'm just going to call it Lion and Unicorn. William Morris was actually kind of like a universal uh, genius because he was doing textile design, he was a poet, he was an artist, a social activist and also associated with the British arts and crafts movement. And this tapestry is depicting the unicorn and the lion. The lion representing England stands for courage and strength. Fuck off you little twat! Sorry. While the unicorn, which represents Scotland, is the symbol of purity, innocence and power. Together they appear also on the royal coats of arms of the United Kingdom and they are signifying the unity of these nations and also their characteristics. There's actually also another painting of Peter Lely. It is two ladies of the Lake family and as it says it is depicting well two ladies of the Lake family and as in the previous artwork also of Peter Lely you can actually see that he is capturing the beauty of his subjects and emphasizes the status and personality through careful composition and use of light. This brings us then to Tomb Raider 3 where we have again a new set of artworks and the first one that I want to tackle is this one here. It is from Edouard Manet. It is the painting Gros Canal à Venise. Manet's work often captures the essence of modern life in his experience, blending then the realism with, with a personal interpretation. His portrayal of Venice Grand Canal is then showing the vibrancy of urban life and also the fluidity of water. And he does so with a distinct way of brush strokes and color palette. The impressionism movement has a focus of capturing effects of light and color in natural settings, often painting also outdoors and a very vibrant use of color with a loose brushwork to convey the impressions of a scene rather than a detailed realism. This brings us then to the next artwork and Tomb Raider 3 seems to really really like Joseph Mallard William Turner because there are multiple paintings from him. Here you can see Venice, the Bridge of Sights. This artwork is celebrated for capturing the ethereal beauty of Venice. Turner's mastery in rendering light and the atmosphere is evident as he depicts the famous bridge enveloped in a misty glow. Turner actually had an innovative approach for his paintings where he said hey we do not need the details of a scenery, we don't need the details of a landscape, it is all about the impressions that the scenery is giving you and it's making it a key work in his artistic legacy. Same thing goes for his artwork Rome from the Vatican. And once again here it is showcasing Turner's skills in capturing the essence and atmosphere of a landscape. I think it also quite shows that Turner had a fascination with light and it renders the way how he used it to enhance the emotional impact of the scenery that he was depicting 
then we have also this artwork which seems to be another artwork from legacy of kane um i actually didn't hear anybody else speak about this artwork because well the other one is very very clear it is the human depiction of kane but here it just seems to be an artwork from the game i couldn't find any further information on what it is depicting i also didn't play legacy of kane so after all i can't give you more information about that i have the feeling that at these other two paintings i can't really say what it is i wasn't able to identify the painting also i have no idea uh, where it possibly could be um i couldn't find who made it i don't know uh, maybe somebody of you in the comments can help out with those then we come to the last artwork which is again a tapestry and that is called the lady and the unicorn this one was a bit easier to find uh, because there's actually a wikipedia page about it but it is one of six tapestries of which five are supposed to depict senses this one is supposed to depict the sense taste and in the taste tapestry there's this lady who is depicting um, receiving sweets from a servant but that's already it my friends these are all the paintings that i could find in the Croft Manor that Lara Croft seems to have got during her adventures. It is pretty interesting to see how much effort the original creators of the game but also the people of the remaster have put into this. There's a lot of thought into it. It is taking artworks from all around Europe. Not only paintings, not only portraits of uh, royal families. No, it is also diving into the sea of other artworks and i think it just fits the vibe of tomb raider if you're interested in one of these artworks in more detail feel free to check out the description there are links to the different wikipedia pages and further information about the artists you can read up on that and also you can help me to identify the last two outstanding paintings that i couldn't identify maybe this is going to be a team effort thanks to the team of core design crystal dynamics and also aspire media you guys made this remaster as awesome as it is and i just thought to give a bit more historical context behind these paintings to delve into this topic because i've not seen anybody uh, going deeper about this i wanted to add onto this conversation and really show that you can learn a lot from video games if you're going to also invest the time and effort in finding out hey what is this here if you have any questions, feel free to drop them in the comments. See you in the next video, guys. Bye-bye.